I think there's still a couple of those available. I know some of you have said, hey, you know, I picked one up and there were 17 left, or I got one and there was 20 left. I just was on the site, viatooloutlet.com, and uh, it still showed up in stock, $79.99. You get everything that you saw me unbox, plus the stand. And if anyone is a fan of these drivers, there's a lot of redundancy in the set, but you can just think of it as backup. Plus, that stand is super nice. You can use it for anything. It will work flawlessly uh, with virtually any VHA driver, particularly 3K and the newer soft finish stuff as well. But I told you in that order that we had some other stuff that I wasn't even going to throw in yet because I wanted to keep the focus on the 3K drivers. And let's go ahead and uh, crank those out right now. So there's not a whole lot, but I think this will be some interesting stuff for you. Up first, we have Viha Stainless Steel. That's right, you can see the Torx logo if you can read that. This is Soft Finish Comfort Grip Stainless Steel Blade. This is a Torx T30 by 115 millimeter. Now the first thing you'll notice, this is kind of a uh, different look for the soft finish. Soft finish, we're accustomed to seeing it in classic red and black color scheme for Viha. This, and I'll tell you right now, it's very difficult to do things without your right thumb that you would easily take for granted. Man, I may actually, as sad as it seems, have to pause this. Nope, persistence pays off. <laughs> but, uh, back to what I was attempting to say. You're probably not accustomed to seeing this color, and obviously this is stainless looks fantastic it's got a hex you know the shaft itself is hex uh, and then of course we come down to the t30 had more sizes of this been available i would have brought them all in and in fact i brought in every single one that they had the problem was they had two and i know you probably heard me say that i have to use t25s quite a bit at work uh, on creating things uh, smaller sizes are used quite a bit as well, you know, when we're machining, but typically, you know, the flag keys, the hex keys, everything like that is still kind of in good shape. But this right here was a steal. Anytime you can get stainless anything for this price point, uh, I'm inclined to jump on it. And if you're curious what I paid for this, <laughs> $2.54, that's right. Uh, so if I'm ever in a situation where I'm building something and I want to use Torx head fasteners, I'm going to come in and if stainless is what the doctor ordered, maybe we're doing fencing with cedar, I don't know. That's the first thing that comes to mind where I would use possibly Torx and possibly stainless. Uh, automotive, I would try to keep it unless I'm trying to make something like tamper proof you know or i can tell if somebody's messed with it maybe we'd go that route uh but the long story short with stainless is it's awesome but it's also really finicky and you want to make sure if you're using stainless fasteners ideally if you care about what you're doing you would want to use stainless instruments case in point if you're shooting you know half 13 by two inch bolts through something a stainless flange will say and you've got a stainless you want a stainless nut on the back side but when you go to tighten that down you want stainless wrench stainless socket obviously the ratchet you know you can get a buy because that's not the point that we're going to touch but it basically just comes down to surface contamination it's going to introduce contaminants it could rust that's not what you bought stainless to do uh, and so this would be a huge deal in terms of what this should have cost it is not anywhere that i could find uh, kc tool viha tools their main website i can't come up with anything of this existing uh, which is unfortunate i'm kind of curious why they would discontinue it because it is the soft finish which is great um kind of makes sense to use the light gray since it is stainless i'm not sure that you can see that really well because of the way it's reflecting but right there you can see it's clearly torx it's t30 it's labeled nicely i'm not exactly sure why they would discontinue this i don't know if it's just a situation the thing was stainless as great as it may seem it does wear, it's a little softer in most cases. I don't know if that was the issue, uh, but it looks like they did a fantastic job with it. And I know what you're saying, well, show us the tip. Well, it's much easier if I do that with this one. And I told you I brought in every single one of them that I could, and there were two available, T30 and T40. And uh, that's what this one is. One of these is still available. I want to say it was the T... 40 that's still available on the website the other one said sold out beside it but it's still there uh the price on this one sit down 254 just like the other one so that's kind of when you know you're getting some good deals i've got to say you know you're probably thinking well t40 you're not gonna use that very often t50 for what it's worth is like almost every single 
uh, seat belt bolt I've dealt with recently. That's mainly late model Mopar stuff, you know, ch Chargers, Challengers, 300 Cs. But uh, it is nice to not have to use a bit when you could get by with a driver like this. Uh, oftentimes you have to break them free with a socket because they're torqued for safety. Uh, but then of course, you know, when you're driving it in and driving it out after it's broken free, this would be super, super nice. But again, the finish on these things is really uh, pretty impressive. The handles do look a little dirty. Uh, and they are straight from the bags, but I mean, these were kind of rejected, I guess, for whatever reason. Let me zoom in now. And just right there, even without my hand, I mean, that's a quality finish. Uh, there is, you can kind of see a little bit of impurity in that stainless. Again, I don't know how, what process these go through from the time they're manufactured to the time they're clearanced. They probably don't have the easiest of lives in terms of transit and storage. But overall, I mean, I, I still think there would have been a market for these. But hey, if I can get them for $254, i will take my chances. And again, right here on the back side of this one, if I can get it to focus, which it's upside down, naturally T40. They did a good job on them. I'm not quite sure what the issue is now. Uh, neat little trick that you can do with most VHA products. You can see made in Germany there. That's sort of a detent to anti-roll. When you flip that though, oh my. That is uh, that is not what I expected to see. That's going to be 08, if I could orient this correctly. So as best I understand, that would be the year that these were manufactured. That's how it's kind of been with all of the stuff I brought in. If it's a new driver, it's like 18 or 19, you know, like something they just dropped. Uh, if it's in that line, it's within the last couple of years. The oldest we typically go back is like 16 and what I've gotten. Case in point, this 3K, which this is not from their blowout clearance. This is one that I brought in earlier. I think this is the, yeah, it's worn. It's probably the first one I brought in. You can see there it's 2017. Uh, you can kind of make out that right <laughs> circle pad. So those stainless torques have been around a long time. So I would say, given the fact that those were manufactured in 2008, we're now in October of 2019, assuming they were warehoused up in Minnesota, I would imagine there's humidity. I would have to say the shafts filled up pretty good. Uh, it's not like they were in a box or anything. They were just loose, possibly bagged the entire time. Uh, but bottom line, for $2.54 a piece, I could not walk away from that. It's kind of one of those things I was buying the set anyway. It makes sense to just throw it in. And uh, hopefully I run across a scenario where I have stainless Torx fasteners and T30 and T40 and we'll get to use them. Otherwise, it was just too good of a deal to pass up and I am ready <laughs> should the opportunity arise. Now, something real interesting to me, kind of going off of something that's just discontinued and seemingly gone because... It's not like, you know, they changed the color scheme to blue or red or something. You can still get Torx finish, uh, I'm sorry, Torx and soft finish. It's just a situation where they don't seem to do the stainless ones. Case in point, I brought this sucker in again because I do a lot of T25. You can see right there, uh, that's going to be our uh, spec out. And if we flip this correctly, 2018, or yeah, 18. And right there again kind of see what I'm working with so I really don't know I guess it wasn't a big seller maybe there were issues maybe it didn't perform like they intended but there doesn't seem to be a successor uh, to the product but I mean even in the change in the logo you can kind of tell again that would be 08 this would be 18 so 10 year span between these two soft finish drivers pretty interesting stuff <laughs> I don't say so myself now this is a soft finish handle, as are these. Of course, up here we have our 3K. Uh, now, right here, we're going to come in, and when I was kind of like, man, I've brought in a lot of screwdrivers. We should get something else I can use to test handle styles. That's what I did with this. This is their Pro Turn handle. We're just going to set that right there for demonstration purposes. And uh, this would be their power handle or power blade. It's also T25. <laughs> we're going to set that right there. And that's going to tie in with this because this is something I have legitimately never seen. I'm going to keep the suspense up by showing you the call card here. Item number 151080. This is also completely sold out. However, if you're interested in the handle, I believe there's a couple more slotted and I think a number one Phillips 4 inch long, something like that. Uh, still available at least at the time that I created this video. So there's going to be the big slot, right? You can kind of see it there. And let me try to... Hope we can get this off left-handed. I tell you what, man. You take your thumb so for granted. 
on. So here it is, nice tip, right? And there's the shaft, it's kind of got like that matte chrome finish, really nice, at least in my opinion. And you'll notice I'm kind of spinning it, or I was. And uh, there's a reason for that. Check this out as I bring it in. This I sort of just brought in because A, of the price, B, I was curious what it was like, and C, it's kind of going to be history. I don't see this being replicated or done up again. This, to me, looks really similar uh, to their earlier precision screwdrivers, which I have none. All of the precision screwdrivers I have would be their uh, Pico finish. And prior to that, they sort of had this style. And even the cap on this, you can actually rotate. <laughs> So it's a drawing from that same mindset despite the fact that it's absolutely massive in comparison uh, But this is the first time I have ever had one of these now What this strikes me as is kind of like the bowl bin like you see on the vessel drivers people like and Of course, it's hard for me to articulate with a broken thumb, but you get the idea I could see that being beneficial. Do I think the soft finish is a superior design? Do I think the 3k is a superior design? Yes, uh, am I sad to see this go? Well, I don't really have a history with it, so there's no sentimental stuff, nothing nostalgic. Uh, I just simply look at it like, these are superior. <laughs> but, it is an option that is no longer there. I'm sure some of you have probably had lots of experience with this style. Some of you might even love it and prefer it over other current options. But uh, it was just one of those things I wanted to bring in to see what it was like. Uh, price on this one, surprisingly... $4.99. It is a fairly large one. I did opt for the biggest slotted they had just because I thought I'd get the most use out of it that way. And what will we do? We'll probably use it a little bit, see if we like it. If we do, we'll continue using it. If we don't, it's kind of there as a time capsule. We'll just kind of have it in the historical archives, if you will. <laughs> so, uh, maybe someday the uh, folks at VHA will say, hey, you that guy that bought that uh, one of those last dynamic screwdrivers, we'd like that in a museum. And I'll say, cool, can you give me a hat? And we'll make a trade. <laughs> so, the final item, I do believe I saved the best for last. And this is kind of a deal where this isn't available. I couldn't find it anywhere. And uh, this is an item, I can't even tell you what I paid. I guess I could if I dug through emails. But this was quite some time ago. And it was brought in with this stuff. It was sold when I priced it out on September 16th. I have it scribbled out with my left hand over there. Uh, priced everything else out, $254, $254, $499. This one, though, it was gone from the site. I want to say it might have been like 6 to $10. I feel pretty confident it was in that range. And I'm going to strategically position my left thumb so you're not going to get to spoil it. This was their item number, 139702. I've skimmed all my catalogs. I can't find it. Uh, if you go online, you can actually find some of these on, like, sketchy websites. Uh, possibly some of them would be legit if you wanted to purchase them. But for all intents and purposes, this is, again, kind of like a relic, a time capsule. I'm kind of assuming this one is no longer in production because it must have not worked well. That's pure speculation on my part. Uh, but just glancing at what's underneath my thumb, I could see where we could have some issues. Uh, nonetheless, this is a number two Phillips, of course, so I'll get the most use out of it. 175 millimeter screw holding screwdriver. The SF would be soft finish, so I'll go ahead and show you that, and you're probably looking at that, and you're like, oh, insulated? No, this is going to be a total different design than anything we've seen before. And uh, once more, I will do my absolute best to open this as quick as possible with only my left hand. And there it is. I'm real curious how this thing is actually going to function now. The back end here, the handle, we're intricately familiar with that. That is their classic VHA soft finish. When we spin that one around, we can actually take a look at the date, which I'll zoom in just so you don't, don't think I'm lying to you. 2016. So as of 2016, three years ago, this sucker was still in production. Now, the screw holding feature is going to be up here at the top. Let's see, a black tip. I'm not sure if we can take that off or not. It seems to be sliding out of the shaft. There's quite a bit of spring-loaded resistance down there. Uh, I'm guessing it'll retract all the way in. As you can see there, you can kind of get the full glimpse of everything. And we can just drop a screw in and see what it does. So, let's see what I've got slotted. Why? When does that happen to me? Uh, you, sir, are the winner. All right, so random screw, I believe, mismatched out of the charger. And what we're going to do is actually slide that up, which I'm doing this with my 
my dead hand, my thumb that's non-functional. I'm just gonna set that in place. You know what? That's actually really... I, I figured, based on the fact that this looked like plastic through the bag, I clearly had not opened this to experiment or play around beforehand. I decided to wing this video out for you. Um, that is incredibly strong. Like, <laughs> I, I told you that this felt like an awful lot of spring-loaded resistance, and sure enough, that's not a bad design. Now, where I'm thinking this probably fails is this loose and that is relatively thin and weak uh, plastic right here on the edges. I think if you would make that out of aluminum, I think you'd have a really pretty solid little... <laughs> In terms of a screw-holding screwdriver, uh, you know, you're not asking for a whole lot. It's usually something that you're not going to use all the time. It's going to be like those impossible blind holes type of thing where you're holding a mirror in this hand and kind of just stabbing with this one and got a you know, work light in your mouth type of a situation. At least that's when I would use them. Uh, throwing the dash pad on a 68 to 70 B body, you have to come in, contort yourself underneath the dash. Uh, if the seats are out, you're doing a little better, but if they're not, you've got like one leg out the rocker, one leg over the center console. It's not comfortable, and then you can't really see anything, and you've got like masking tape over sockets. You're trying to get like five sixteenths, you know, nuts to slide. That type of a situation, this is a, this is like incredibly solid, and I guess a lot of it has to do probably with the tip. The screw, even though it's rusted on the back end, it's in mint shape. Uh, head wise, but I mean that is absurdly strong. Let me just I Mean this hand over here is obviously neon orange. It is out of the picture. I Think if you could upgrade this to aluminum, I don't know what that would do to the weight Maybe you just have to increase the handle size to balance it a little better That's a pretty dang good design uh, in terms of the spring loaded now. I don't know obviously this is our first time loading her up it could be a situation where they lost spring tension prematurely. It could just be a deal where the people that bought them broke those off very quickly or were dissatisfied with it. The only uh, other real screw holding driver I have here is this Intec from Philo, which kind of along those lines, but went the magnetic route. Uh, but where they have this collar here, I kind of, I don't know. If you were to cross these two products, I think you'd have a pretty good little setup there. Now, interestingly, if you just Google screw holding screwdrivers, you will eventually find these, but you'll see some stuff from Klein, which I have never in my life seen in a store or at a supplier or had anyone try to sell me, which is interesting because people are always peddling Klein stuff on me. Um, this is a good little design. Again, longevity might be the issue, but it was pretty easy, like I said, to articulate without a thumb even. I'm kind of impressed by that guy. Uh, let me show you the screw just so you know what we're working with. Again, it is mint condition up top. Again, it is rusted <laughs> throughout the sides, but uh, the head itself is in really good shape. All right, you heard the Philo come in and get it. That, the Viha actually established a much, I rest my case, stronger hold than the Philo. Now, obviously, you're typically not going to have that happen, but what you have to think of is you can kind of see this one be articulated. It just pulls the magnet up. While you're not going to be swinging it around wildly like I did there for demonstration purposes, when you're stabbing a blind hole or coming in back and up using a mirror trying to get in, if I'm trying to thread it between, you know, the peace sign here and I'm hitting the index finger or the traffic finger, we have situations where I could potentially be knocking that off. That's why you want it to be a strong grip. That's why you've invested in a screw holding screwdriver. That, I don't know. Uh, if anyone had one of these, and I assume some of you did, what happened? Like, why did this go wrong? Did the plastic break? Because uh, you got to realize with this design, once these two little tongs here go, uh, you're not going to be able to hold it anymore. I don't believe that's magnetic. Certainly not. I mean, look how good that holds it. I mean, it's definitely not an issue with the tip. That's pretty dadgum solid right out of the box. You can't see it very well. Uh, but, I mean, it's holding that screw really good as is. And then add that spring-loaded force. I'm assuming this probably went. If this lasted, I'm guessing something in the handle must have gone. Uh, the spring mechanism. But just initial impression says that's actually pretty legit design. 
So as I said, I do honestly not remember what I paid for that. I want to say it was around 10 bucks. Worst case scenario, best case scenario, it was probably more like six to eight ish. But uh, considering that we got my favorite handle, the 3K, uh, in on absolutely everything they have left and picked up another really nice stand which you can fit these absurdly long screwdrivers in that was a good deal and then spending another what we'll just say 10 15 20 bucks for these tools granted they're kind of like time capsules but stainless anything again for 254 a piece is a steal uh, in the event that I ever need them, I've got them. And like I said, if I'm ever doing stuff with cedar or redwood or I'm called over to help somebody with a deck, I'll have you know a really nice soft finished handle that I can use to... Granted, most people strip out deck screws, but you know what I'm saying. If somebody took time and did it right, you know, maybe we can make use of them. Uh, and then this one right here is kind of just a deal. I'll try using it, see what I think of it. Uh, but I just kind of kind of thought it was cool to bring it in, kind of have a piece of history in our hands. And then this one right here, I was a bit leery of because it's plastic, but I can definitely see what they were going for. And again, I'm kind of thinking if you could somehow change this entire structure uh, out to aluminum or even have it to where this threaded on um, at some point. I hate threading aluminum on the plastic, but I mean, if, if the shaft had a union right here towards the tip where you could thread that on, i.e. you broke an aluminum fork off of it and just were able to replace that, pretty good design. Again, I'm not dissected this. I, there's no literature or paperwork that I could find, you know, like, hey, that's what's going on in the handle. But in my opinion, there's a spring. It's pulling it back down, keeping the pressure on, and it does a pretty good job. And the weak point, in my opinion, would be the plastic right there. And that's probably what they realize and why it's not available anymore. But I'm pretty glad I picked that sucker up because I think I will be able to use it. And uh, in those situations where I am calling upon that tool, I think we can get, you know, at least a couple uses out of it before it goes completely. And that will save me a ton of headache. Pretty good day, I have to say. Uh, if you have used this again, please let me know. Was it the plastic? Was the handle? Did you lose spring tension? What went down? Uh, if it's something you've never seen before, if this was currently available or, say, improved upon, maybe an aluminum structure, kind of like the Philo, is that something you would pick up? Uh, it's certainly an interesting design. also kind of like the long length on it. Obviously, I think the shorter length, it would be a little bit more stout. Uh, the farther out you go, the more risky you're getting in terms of breaking something because of the increased leverage, which is naturally there by a product of the increased length. Uh, this one right here I think will serve me well too, but uh, I think if you were to cross the best of both of these, you'd have a pretty solid little screw holding screwdriver. So, uh, Vera, I believe all they offer is like a clip that would slide on, which I've never tried one of those, they just kind of seem janky. Might have to bring some in, see what we think of them, but uh, I don't know. I think this might be something Viha should revisit and just try to kind of refine the design. Again, I'm not familiar with what failed. I would assume plastic and then to the spring, but uh, maybe offer up like a rebuild kit and just ship them out with like four or five ends that the user could put on. Might be worth a go. Um, certainly, this seems pretty impressive out of the box, and I thought it was going to suck. <laughs> So I'm pleasantly surprised. Kind of wish I'd opened this sooner. But uh, nonetheless, that is what we had. This is way longer than I thought it would be. But hey, uh, it is what it is. So uh, I will quit rambling. I do hope you enjoyed us. Maybe you learned a little something. Maybe you're going to go try to pick up one of these stainless Torx drivers before they disappear. Again, had any other size been available, 50, 25, 15, 10, I would have bought them all. Uh, because I'm a person, I understand the value of stainless, I understand that it serves a point and purpose. Uh, somewhat limited at times, but it's also super expensive when it's in its prime. And getting these on closeout, that was just a stupid good deal. Uh, case in point, this one right here, not quite sure how I'm going to like it, but I'll give it a go. And again, if nothing else, it's just sort of like a time capsule for us. And this guy here, I don't know that we've seen the end of that one. I would like to see that revisited 
I think you could easily make improvements to it and uh, get it back on the market. But hey, that's just my opinion, and I'm just a guy with a crud ton of screwdrivers. So uh, I'm going to go see if the car has cooled off, try to finally finish something up so I can get it back on the road. And uh, it's interesting without a right thumb, but hey, uh, I'm doing my best. So with that said, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I encourage you to leave a like. Again, by all means, experience with any of these, uh, including if you had these and they just wore out ridiculously fast. Leave a comment down below. Let us know if you are a fan of screw-holding screwdrivers. What's the best you've used? What's the worst you've used? What would you like to see ideally? Uh, who knows? Maybe somebody will watch this and they'll crank out our picture-perfect product. <laughs> well, it's, uh, nonetheless, again, thanks for watching. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us at LoneStarMopars on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Should have videos out every Saturday morning for you, sometimes on Wednesdays, which... Spoiler alert, this one might be on a Wednesday. But uh, I'll quit rambling again. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all back here in the next one.